People say to me all the time, you are such a good looking man. You're so humble, Matt. Your mother's got the girdle on when I'm connected. She's like me, I just got myself a pair of men's spanks. <laughs> I don't care if they call me a scam artist, but if they call me fat, I'm gonna cry. I'm doing the pageant again this year. Maybe we could get Matt and you together. <laughs> There's another pageant queen in the house that I'm trying to compete with. <laughs> All right, E's new reality show, Meet the Frasier, stars psychic comedian Matt Frazier alongside his beauty queen girlfriend Alexa and their very colorful extended families. And Matt joins us now. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's good to be you. here. I love your coats, the whole thing. Oh, you are you. The on point. The shoes, All everything. <laughs> so the show premieres January 13th. Back to back episodes. Yes. What are you most excited for everyone to see? To meet my family, of course. Yeah. I mean, so many people know me from my live events and my shows and my tour across the country uh, as a psychic medium. And now they get to see the behind the scenes of not what it's like working with the dead, but also what it's like working with the living and working with family. <laughs> yeah. You work with family, you know that's painful. Yeah. It's been a running theme today, say, right? Like, kind of like if it's topic. good or bad to do it. So I look, people know you on stage, know the things that you do publicly. This is a whole new personal level. Is there anything you're anxious about? about people seeing, discovering, learning. Oh, I'm anxious for it all. Yeah. I mean, just the fact of, you know, how we work together every single day because, you know, going to each show and going to each event, it really takes, you know, an army to get these events together. And my family's not the most professional. I mean, <laughs> we love each other, but we do get on each other's nerves. Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. I have a mother that's so far up my rear end, I mean, I can't get her up if I had a pair of tongs. I mean... It gets a little bit crazy. <laughs> I have a, you know, a girlfriend who I absolutely love. You know, we have three Bengal cats at, at home. Oh, have, that's nice. Yeah, I have a sister who, you know, is a skeptic, a dad who is a skeptic. Right. We deal with that, you know, in the show as well. <laughs> okay. Do you ever so, find it difficult or a burden being a medium? Like, do you ever have to, like, turn it off? You know, that's a good question. In the beginning, I did. Yeah. When I was growing up, just being three, four, five years old, I was petrified of this. You know, I didn't realize that I had a gift. I literally just thought that the house was haunted or where I was going was haunted because I literally felt like I was living that movie, The Sixth Sense. Mm. So in the beginning, I grew up afraid of this. And it wasn't until later on in life that I rediscovered that this was actually a gift and it was actually a calling. And it was something that I could use to help others get back in touch with those that they love and miss on the other side. Are the voices constant? Or are you able to kind of like put it to the back burner and focus on what's happening here? Like, how does that work? So I try to live a normal life. Yeah. But to be honest with you, the voices are there. And you know, those on the other side, those in spirit, know that I'm someone that can communicate with them and I'm somebody that can hear them. Hmm. So if there's a message or if there's something that they have to say, or if there's a message that has to be delivered, they will come through and try to reach me. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. When it comes to stepping out and you know, publicly declaring that you have this ability, that had to be a big moment for you. You mentioned your dad's a skeptic. Is it tough when family members are like, oh, all right, I don't believe it? So it is a little bit tough, but you know, for people who don't know my story, my dad was actually out of my life for 21 years only because he was in the military. So he was out to sea and during that time we didn't have cell phones, FaceTime, things like that. So growing up, my dad didn't know that I was having these experiences. And then when he came home from being in the service, all of a sudden his son's a medium and hearing and, and seeing dead people. And he's like, well, how did this happen? Yeah. Mm. You know, so he really didn't get to see, you know, the inner workings of how this came to be and how it started to happen. Sort of the development of it. It was just yeah. sort of like dropped on and here boom, it here it is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But actually, you know, I never went out and decided I want to be a medium. That's well, right, not what right. happened. You know, I really missed my calling a little bit because you can remember in the beginning I was afraid. So I actually always felt the need to help others. I started my career as an EMT, working for the World Trade Center in Boston. I worked for the Security Operations Department. And then from there, I went to go and see a medium for the first time myself, because my grandmother had this ability, my mom had this ability. Oh, wow. But all they did was run from it. So I wanted to see somebody in real life who was actually using this, helping people. So I went to go and see a medium for the first time. I was like, oh my, oh my God, I don't have to be afraid anymore. Wow. Wow. And then after that, lightning struck. Like next thing you know, word travels quickly about the one who could speak to the dead. And you know, I was asked to be on TV shows and morning talk shows and radio shows to next thing you know, one day getting a call from E! Entertainment. Wow. Are, yeah. And viewers are gonna see that you and your mom, as you mentioned, is also a medium and you guys are very close. So have you had any Too luck? Close. I, Too <laughs> close. I watched. <laughs> now, have you had any luck recently with setting boundaries with her? No. <laughs> and you know, any any Italian uh, any Italian child, especially a, you know, a boy will tell you that setting boundaries with an Italian mother, they just don't get it. <laughs> I mean, they don't get it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what else to do. Yeah. <laughs> I live in a different state. She's trying to move closer to me. Yeah. I, I can't get her. But it's great. Away. It's a great thing. It really is. <laughs> it is. Let's it take is. a quick look at uh, another part of this season's teaser. Watch. I want to propose to Alexa. Well, you believe this? Sh
Like, I can't believe Matthew trusts all these idiots to, like, not blow this. What? I'm praying that my parents don't f this up. What is going on? <laughs> Looks disastrous. <laughs> what can you tell us about what's going on here? Oh, boy. Well, <laughs> to sum it up, my mother does not want me to get married. Okay. She does not want me to propose to Alexa. Are you engaged today? Um, well, you know, you have to watch your foot. <laughs> I will yeah, say, you've got some great bling on your yeah, hand. I don't know what she's got on her hand. But I'm, they... I'm Italian, so, you know, we, Italians give the best jewelry. We take them off of dead people. <laughs> but do we get engaged? Do we, I mean, I don't know. All right. I'm not sure. Now, we'll what's find her out. reasoning for not wanting you guys to get engaged, though? Oh, because she's so that. overprotective. I think, you know, every, every Italian mother doesn't want to lose her son, right? Mm -hmm. We'll talk so. to Alexa about how difficult that process <laughs> must be. Oh, I'm sorry to hear. <laughs> now, how often do you use your psychic abilities on Alexa? Yeah, I mean, it's not like I use it on Alexa. Uh. I mean, she tries to say I use it on her. I, I, mean, some, I mean, listen, I can't hope who I am. I was born this way. Sometimes I hear things. Sometimes I feel things. Does it sometimes help the she relationship? Don't like it. Does it help the relationship at times? Or does she, like, get annoyed? No, I feel like it does. And it especially <laughs> helps, like, if she's not feeling well or she's sick. And sometimes I can pinpoint what's going on or there's been times when my ability has helped us in our life and basically in, in you know our house and situations that have happened all right before you go is it possible to do a little mini reading is that something that you're able to do on the spot yeah so while I'm right here I just kept hearing somebody pass a tragedy who's a part in a tragedy hmm um, I don't know is it a guy or... I felt like it was with you yeah a guy or a girl? yes I mean I've had a cousin but because I felt like there was balloons that were just let off in his memory. Did you know if the family that balloons off in his honor here in the sure. physical? I'm not sure. He's stepping forward when I kept hearing that there was questions over reviving him or bringing him back. So anytime I hear that there's questions over life support or things like that with mm -hmm. his departure. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Yes. And because he says to me, please let my family know. He kept trying to reach his family and tell his family to know that everything that they did for him, that he understands on the other side. He talks about them having to make choices and decisions with his passing mm -hmm. here in the physical world. And there's still questions over his passing mm -hmm. and what had happened. Yeah. But I have to tell you Whoa. that this, <laughs> hold on, wait a minute. He's trying to tell me what had, what had happened. Okay. Because he's telling me this was an accident when I'm connecting with him. Yeah. And he keeps saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because he says I should have listened. Mm. Do you understand yeah. that? He talks about him, he went unconscious, and yep. that there was no, it, there was an issue with, I kept, like, cause I kept hearing somebody trying to revive him. Yeah. And he says to me, you know, I was already gone. So that even though he's- crazy. I don't mean yeah. to make you cry, but he also wants to tell his family thank you, cause I just saw balloons being let off into the air, and he says to me that they just did this for him. So I felt it was just the anniversary of his passing. Do you know if that's true? He recently passed, yeah. Okay, yeah. so when everyone got together and let the balloons off, know it's his way of acknowledging that. Wow. Is there also Jay? Jay. Th like the name J-A-Y, like J? Not because I'm thinking of. I feel like that's a friend of his or somebody that he's passing love on to because okay. they will talk about people here in the physical world mm -hmm. that are connected to them. Okay. And he also said to me that he's so happy with the way that he was laid to rest here in the physical world mm -hmm. because he was just laid in casual wear when I'm connecting with him. Mm -hmm. He says, and look at how good I look. Look at how good I look. You know, he was so high energy here in the physical world. Yes. And when I'm connecting with him, he like always used to be matching because he's even commenting on me because they have side conversations with me. And he's like, oh, I love your style. But his was <laughs> yeah. different. His yeah. was different. He used to wear hats here in yes. the physical oh world. God. And his hat just Whoa, like. I can't. This, his, is, this is wild. He tells me all of his family kept hats of his. Oh, my God. And they used to like match so his weird. shoes. Like it's like the shoes, the shirt, and the hats all match. And he says, Do you know I was even buried in this or like buried with his hats? Do you understand that? That is wild. You guys are you making tearing up? Yeah. We got the Tammy Faye going on over here. <laughs> I can't wait to tell his daughter. He says to me that her. that he's so sorry that the family had to say goodbye to him like this because he says to me, nobody got a proper goodbye. He says, and more importantly, he says, I was going through so many struggles within my life because he's acknowledging that. I gotta tell you, there's also some addiction issues that mm -hmm. he was going through as well because he just showed me beer bottles that he's pushing away. Oh my away. God, <laughs> this is so what, What's really wild about this as well is like, Donna, you're not normally here. No. And this isn't something that like, we've had discussions about or Whoa. something like that at all. It's really pretty. He also knows that his watch was passed down as well, by the way. Okay. So know that like when you talk to her, these are just things that were kept and things that he held on to. But can you please let his daughter know because he talks about big moments that are coming up in, in her life right now. He says, and please let her know that I'm going to be there for every single moment and every milestone that she achieves. He says, I need her to know that because she feels like I wasn't present enough in her life. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So please that, pass that message on. And this is what's so amazing about what I do is that when I deliver a message, even if you're, if that person isn't here, they'll use you to deliver the message. So yeah. for example, he's been trying to get in touch with his daughter, get in touch with his family and let them all know that he's safe and at peace. And there was nothing else that could have been done. This is wow. crazy how spot on you are just now. Like, well, I didn't get a TV show being wrong. I can tell you that. <laughs>
guess not. Wow, making wow, believers over wild. here. And you know what I actually really do appreciate about it? Even when people are skeptical, there that when you do deliver these types of things, it does help people bring about closure mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 obviously fulfills a need that may be lingering for someone. And that's that's a great service that but you're providing. I gotta sure. tell you something before before we wrap up. Yeah. He was like a soul, right? That even though he was older, he like never grew up here no, in this world. Cause no. he like, I don't know if he was in like to the rapping and things when he was here, but he's like brushing his shoulders he off when really I'm connecting cool, with him. Chill. Like he's, he was like the grown adult that was like a kid. Though. Yeah, like, he, like, he was him. obsessed with cars as yeah. well. Like with the big rims and things. Cause when I'm connecting with him, he like loved his cars. He's like showing me posing in front of the cars. He's like <laughs> Mr. Cool guy on the other side. He it's says, so but the hardest part is that when they, when your loved ones go to the other side, sometimes they see the things that they, they should have done. And he says, I could have been a better dad. Yeah. Wow. Well, wow. Thank well, you thank for you. that. Thank I will you definitely for... share that with her. Did you poop your pants a little bit? A little. I don't tell anybody. <laughs> You can see everything, so. Listen, if you put a pair of, of me and Spanx on TV, then I get to talk about people. <laughs> Matt, thank you for being here. Thank you so um, much. And there's a line out the door now for people like me next. Um, guys, make sure to watch Meet the Frasers, premiering with back-to-back -back episodes Monday, January 13th, 10 p.m. Eastern on E!